Prostagard. We went out and looked at the top prostate formulas. Some of them, thirty nine ninety five. You hear on radio for the same dose of saw palmetto. Well, we don't stop with saw palmetto, which you can just go look and even see what the government says about that. I mean, that's admitted. I mean, MDs recommend that as a secondary deal for prostate enlargement. I'm not recommending it. I'm just saying, wow, thank God for saw palmetto. Check it out for yourself, and you can read the rave reviews, and then we go through all the things that are in there, not just that, but a bunch of other compounds. So, and, and, and by the way, it's 1995. So it's half the price or less, a leading competitor, and it's it's a much bigger dose. It's got everything in it. And by much bigger dose, it's got a whole bunch of stuff in it. We just set out to give people just a crackerjack product because that's what, how we want to be treated, but also just from a cynical perspective. Giving people something really high quality, they're going to keep coming back over and over again. I mean, I take the products. My, I take my products over leading competitors. And I want the best for my family. Survival Shield, I believe personally from my own research, the best, cleanest, purest iodine out there. I mean, nobody else I know has 999, whatever it is. I mean, go look it up for yourself. The facts are at InfoWarsLife.com. That is selling out. It'll be a month or two till we get more in. Brain Force, I'm not going to get into that. Go read what's in it. InfoWarsLife.com or 888 253 3139. And that's how we fund this operation. And I'm going to give it my best shot on TV and the syndication in the next few months into the next year. Uh, I'm going to try to get on as many AM and FM affiliates. We're getting more. I'm going to try to get as big and aggressive in the face of the globalists as I can. And if we peter out or we stall or we, 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 we contract, that's fine. I have a moral responsibility. You think I want to work harder? You think I want to be a bigger target? No. But I have a responsibility to go 110%. I'm doing it. And most importantly, don't just buy the products from us. Spread the word about the broadcast. Even more important, pray for us. Because prayer is real. And if you would just intercede and ask God to bless us, to help us, to give us stamina, to give us strength, that no weapon of the enemy that's forged against us prospers. I know God answers prayers when believers come together and do that. And for all the fools that don't believe in God out there, they haven't experienced providence. I have experienced it, and I don't believe in prayer. I absolutely depend on it as my North Star. So please continue to put us in your prayers, put us on your calendar, put us in your day book. Please pray for us as much as you can, and, and ask that we be, give, uh, be given discernment, uh, be asked that our enemy steps uh, be, be uh, directed that they fall, uh, and that we continue to be more effective in the face of the New World Order as is our human charter, uh, if we serve Christ to stand up against evil. I mean, <laughs> massive baby harvesting operations, you know, chimeras, half human, half animal. I mean, it's so far worse than we even know. It's so much more insane. All right, I'm going to shut up and go back to Leo Zagami. He'll be with us 15 minutes the next hour because I got him on late today and to take your phone calls. Leo Zagami, you got cut off about at the break about the epic fight, the new Cold War, what you saw in the meetings, what's going on with the Pope, is there a rebellion against him inside the Vatican, who are the factions, where is it all going, and other key points, and then we're going to move to the calls. Well, to conclude with Putin, I must say it's very symbolic, the fact that Hungary is slowly driving towards the Russian uh, direction, is supporting Russia. And we remember Hungary in 1956, they were the ones who rebelled to the Soviet Union. But this time, they see that it's better to actually side with Russia than to side with the US. So I think uh, this uh, move from Hungary is very symbolic. Also, we have to understand that ISIS is fighting together with neo-Nazis in Ukraine against Russia. So what do you expect Putin to do? I mean, uh, this is a fight which is arriving directly on his borders. So having closed this uh, Putin parenthesis, I want to continue with that TV reporter which I was talking to you about before. That was done by some friends of mine, journalists from a TV show in Italy called Piazza Pulita. What they did was to broadcast it when the Pope left for America so he will not be around for the outrage that followed. Because... Uh, this journalist, this Arab journalist uh, that the Italian journalists use, camouflaged himself, uh, well, basically he acted like he was a Syrian refugee, and he followed on the exact words of Pope Francis going around the Vatican, all the churches, the nuns, uh, all the congregations, knocking on all their doors, and with a secret camera, seeing the reactions. Well, Alex, what kind of reaction do you think the Vatican had in front of a Syrian refugee? 
with they, two kids. Eh? They probably freaked out and slammed the door in their face. Absolutely, yes. Uh, and one of them even escaped. And the crazy thing is that on the website of that congregation, it said that they welcome especially the poor and they care for them. Instead, the reality was very different. So this guy for a whole day went around the Vatican and showed Italy that the words that Pope Francis uh, said first in June uh, which basically were the words uh, of condemnation towards those people that don't open the door to the immigrants. You know, if in, they, they knock the door, we have to open our door. Well, why don't they open their door in their churches? Their, their, uh, there was one place where this immigrant went, uh, where the Vatican, you know how much money they asked him? They asked him 300 for an ordinary room and 500 for a deluxe room. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's just unheard of. But this TV report created a general outrage amongst the Italian population. And finally, I think uh, uh, people are starting to realize the lies of Pope Francis. Uh, also, another important aspect of the world things that are happening uh, this week is uh, this church that has been set on fire in Bethlehem, the Church of St. Charbel by Muslims. But the Vatican and also the Palestinian authorities have prohibited to talk about it. Because, of course, nobody wants uh, people to know that in the birthplace of Jesus Christ, Muslims are setting churches on fire. So, I mean, this is the situation today in the world, and we are in front of these graceful acts, uh, thanks to this mondialist, this globalist promoted by the Pope, of course, and Obama and all the others. It really is ridiculous because some of the walls, we looked it up in the Vatican, are over 200 feet tall. Their main wall is about, what, 50 feet on average. It's got private mercenaries from Switzerland guarding it for 300 years. It's tax exempt. It owns 177 million acres. They admit they have a lot of hidden wealth. You're an expert on this. You've written books on the subject. What is the real wealth of the Vatican? How is it controlled? Because I looked into it. They basically give nothing to the poor. It is the biggest front ever. Uh, but he's lecturing American and European middle classes that we need to open our doors up as European pensioners are being thrown out of their government's subsidized homes that they pay for, but they don't own. They're being thrown out to make way for the illegal alien invaders dubbed the precious darling migrants. Well, of course, uh, the, the money that the Vatican has is uh, a lot, also the gold they have. They have especially gold, a lot of gold, and they have a lot of property around the world. Imagine all the the state the Vatican owns is infinite. So they are extremely rich. And the gold was actually removed from the Vatican Bank the moment, the moment they had to pass from Ratzinger to Pope Francis, because uh, now that they have to clarify certain positions with the worldwide authorities that uh, were actually took, taking away the SWIFT, you know, the SWIFT system, which is this worldwide banking system, was actually taken away from the Vatican when Pope Ratzinger resigned and was only, I mean, was basically given to back to the Vatican only with the Pope Francis arrived, they could finally have the SWIFT system back into the Vatican Bank. It was a kind of like blackmail from the banking authorities. And in the meantime, the, the, the gold got actually removed. So let's be clear, that was in the news, but buried in the paper. Internationally, the Vatican had its banking power threatened. And so it literally was coup d'etat uh, by the banking and the pedophile Pincer attack to turn it over to Ratzinger. I'm um, to turn it over from Ratzinger when he ran off to Gandalf Castle. I'm serious, folks. It's called Gandalf Castle. Uh, and then they brought in uh, Francis. Yeah, and the gold got sent to Frankfurt, to the JP Morgan in Frankfurt. So now, basically, there is not uh, really any gold in the Vatican Bank because it's being moved all abroad. So the, the Italian authority or the investigative authorities who need to clear these matters don't have access to Well, that to says it. it right there. I mean, the Vatican has been conquered. Absolutely. The Vatican is now taken over by these uh, Jesuits who next year, in October, will have their uh, general, uh, um, basically this general gathering from uh, Jesuits coming all over the world that will nominate a new uh, Jesuit general. So now at the moment we have Adolf Nicolas. He is basically the superior general of the Jesuits. We together with Pope Francis deal with the whole Catholic Church. 
And next year, in October, Adolf Nicholas will step down. Uh, this is an un another unprecedented move in history because the general of the Jesuits was like the Pope. He never stepped down, but this is already the second one that steps down, and we will have a new one coming up. So there is a lot going on, and uh, next year we will have uh, a new uh, uh, level of, uh, let's say, Pope Francis' control of the whole thing. So let's see who is going to place as the Jesuit general. In any case, uh, um, as I was saying earlier, crosses are being destroyed. The value of the cross is being destroyed. It's not only the fact that he criticizes Jesus for having gone on the cross. He actually called the cross a vessel, simply a symbol. And not By so the way, important. this is so important. People say, oh, he means he failed physically, but spiritually won. He didn't say that. He stopped. We have the transcript. He moved away. We'll play it again after the break and then go to phone calls. But in Satanism, they desecrate the cross. They say it failed. They say Christ failed. They say he's weak. They say he's torn to pieces. That's actually, I don't want to get into it on air, but I've studied it. That is deep black magic Satanism. I mean, does the Pope know what he was saying when he says Christ failed? I mean, that is a satanic statement. It is a satanic statement that goes with this uh, implementation of a one-word religion, because you can't have the cross uh, in this one-word religion as the uh, supreme uh, symbol. It has to be, basically, he has to put down the cross to put it on the level of all the other symbols, so in the name of ecumenism, it all comes together. In the meantime, ISIS, without the mercenaries of uh, America, Israel, and the Emirates, and the whole New World Order, are destroying systematically the crosses on every church in Iraq, and they are prohibiting Christians from practicing their faith. And now the ACLU is having them pulled off hilltops, churches are having to pull nativity scenes, you can see the total satanic attack on Christianity. Yeah, it's, it's, it's unheard of. It's, I mean, it's in front of our eyes and nobody seems to really realize this. Then we had the openly gay Mo Rocca opening uh, the scriptures at the Papal Mass at Madison Square. I mean, it's a little bit uh, like embracing the lobby gay this way. We didn't uh, really expect this to happen during the Pope visit, but it happened. So, uh, of course, the Pope is never going to discuss uh, this whole gender issue in the proper way. But his people are, and they're going to signal that. So all the old ways are being overturned, a radical transformation in coordination with Obama. World government, stay with us. We are back live, ladies and gentlemen, broadcasting worldwide. I'm your host, Alex Jones. Leo Zagami is our guest. I have never seen a religious institution more out in the open promoting world government, while our own globalist government, our own Anglo-American power axis out of Europe and the U.S., is funding radical Islam and running ISIS and Al-Qaeda and top generals come out, a whole bunch of them. The former head of defense intelligence just resigned two months ago and says, yeah, we're funding ISIS and Al-Qaeda and we told them and the White House knows and this is their directive plan and this is just horrible. We're made to fix intelligence to cover it up. You can really see it because I thought they'd bring in world government with a clash between Islam and Christendom instead they're going to bring in political correctness and make Christendom submit to Islam. That's why I said I was never really an Islam basher. I saw them being set up for the clash of civilizations. I saw them as victims in Iraq and other areas, which I'm still against. But that was the setup to empower the radicals, to build them up, to weaken Iraq, to then take over the whole region. Just like Libya, just like overthrowing our allies in Egypt. I mean, this is diabolical. I want to go to phone calls for Will, Nick, Dan, and others, the toll-free number to talk to Leo Zagami today is 800-259-9231. Leo Zagami, when I talk about diabolical, they're saying ban the name mother and father. They're, they're, I mean, it's just total tyranny. How far will... You've been in the secret societies. You've been a high-level Mason. You've been involved with the Vatican. That's why you turned against it, I guess, a decade ago when you saw it was evil. You've published 12 books on the subject. At the heart of it, what is it? Because I've been to Bohemian Grove, I've covered Skull and Bones. At the, at the bottom of the rabbit hole, I found these people are Luciferians. They believe Lucifer is God. Satanists work for them that are into partying and evil and hurting folks. But at the top, aren't they really Luciferians or what have you found? Yes, the New Age cults 
are all fundamentally uh, Luciferian, this uh, rainbow symbol that we all, you know, see these days that was born uh, officially in San Francisco, 